Hello, and welcome to Forks in Fitness. I'm your health guru host, Jennifer Wade. Today I'm very excited because it's March, which means spring is finally approaching. I love springtime because my favorite fruits and vegetables are in season. So I will likely be spending most of my Saturday mornings at Hawthorne's Farmer's Market. I try to buy seasonal produce for a number of reasons. It tends to be less expensive, fresher, and more flavorful. I also love supporting local farmers and knowing that my food is coming from Southern California and not a country halfway across the world. Even if you prefer to shop at the grocery store, you will still save money by purchasing seasonal produce, as grocery stores tend to stock up on fruits and vegetables that are the most readily available. You can also find great sale prices on seasonal items. So in the coming months, if you want the most bang for your buck, consider adding strawberries, spinach, broccoli, pineapple, mangoes, and even asparagus to your grocery list. Another benefit of spring is the beautiful weather, making it a great time for you and your family to start spending more time outdoors. While there are numerous health benefits from being outside, such as the sun triggering your body to make that valuable vitamin D, there are also a number of safety precautions you should take. Our first guest will teach you a thing or two about self-defense. After that, we'll be cooking a traditional, yet still healthy, Cuban dish. Stay tuned, there's plenty of surprises still ahead. I'm thrilled to introduce our first guest, Marcus Koval. Marcus received his black belt in Krav Maga from the Krav Maga Worldwide Headquarters in Los Angeles. He is now the owner and lead instructor at Systems Training Center in Hawthorne. Marcus, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. So tell me, what is Krav Maga and how did it originate? Krav Maga is the official self-defense training for the Israeli mili military and that's where it was developed. Uh, it came to the U.S. in the 1980s and it's today the official self-defense training for law enforcement in the U.S., LAPD, FBI, CIA, SWAT teams are all trained in Krav Maga. Oh my gosh, everyone's doing it. It's very, very efficient self-defense. So it's meant to work for anyone, regardless of size, age, gender. And um, it's been very uh, uh, effective and proven effective. So that's why it's become so popular. And I had the chance to stop by Marcus's gym and check out the beginner Krav Maga class. Let's check the clip out. You may learn a thing or two. Would you know how to defend yourself in the case of an unexpected attack? If you're like me and lack confidence in your self-defense abilities, Krav Maga may be just the class for you. Go! Krav Maga is very realistic street self-defense. It's not a martial art per se, it's more of a system that's taking the best out of different martial arts and put it together to a system that would work for anyone, no matter of size, age, male, female, it's supposed to be for everyone. Yeah, I feel that this class is something everybody should take. As far as self-defense, they make sure that you're prepared. They put you in real life type of situations. Um, they have, throw things at you that you're not expecting. In his class, Caval covers proper punching techniques and drills to quickly neutralize an opponent. Common mistake is that people shuffle their feet. That split second when your feet are together, you can't punch and you're off balance. So step one, two, then push up your front leg with your back leg first. One, two, step back. Many adult students explain that they enrolled in Krav Maga with their children, so the whole family can feel safe at all times. I had a really bad experience when I was five years old. I was raped. I didn't want my kids to, you know, to go over something that happened to me. So I know I'm not going to be always there to protect them and I really wanted them to learn something to defend themselves. In addition to gaining a confident attitude, students said they got a great workout with interval type training. When I started here, the first time I walked in, I was about 282 pounds, something like that. So right now I'm in the 240s, 239s, so about 40, 41 pounds in six months. So whether you're trying to lose weight or tone up, Krav Maga will provide you with an intense workout that could just end up saving your life. That class was a killer workout. Marcus, how did you get involved in Krav Maga? Um, the man who brought Krav Maga from um, Israel to Europe uh, was actually one of my corner men when I, when I fought. Uh, so I was introduced to it then. But then when I moved to Los Angeles, I, uh, I did my master's here in LA. I, I was teaching kickboxing at Krav Maga Worldwide. Um, I was introduced to Krav Maga at a different level and 
starting to, I went through all the rigorous Kramagaya courses in order to become an instructor. Each course is eight hours a day, seven days straight, and it's four different levels of that. So I started doing it and it was something that went very well hand in hand with what I do. Obviously, fighting is a sport, but there's a lot of people that don't want to fight, but they want to learn how to defend themselves. So uh, it was something I, I became very passionate about. You do a lot of different types of fighting, right? MMA, you were telling me some of your background? Um, I've done boxing, kickboxing, um, I've golden gloves here in the US, title boxing world championships, kickboxing, and then I got into mixed martial arts as well. And yeah, so and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu too. Wow. So why would you recommend Krav Maga to the average person over other forms of martial arts? I think all forms of martial arts are great, and I love it. Obviously, I, I, I partake in most of them myself. But um, what's good about Krav Maga is that someone who has no intentions of being a fighter and just wants to learn how to defend themselves in, in, in the streets and stand a better chance in, t in case of an attack. Um, Krav Maga is very, very simple to learn. You don't have to go five, six days a week. Two to three times a week is a good average. And very quickly can you learn how to stand a better chance in case of a situation. Plus, it's a great workout at the same time. Yeah, it is. And you also often work with um, rape victims and returning vets. Can you tell me more about that? Uh, when it comes to people that have been sexually attacked, um, it's a lot of times, you know, the, the fear of, of meeting strangers, uh, obviously most of the time it's women, women dealing with, with men, uh, and it's a way of overcoming it and saying I will never be a victim again. I'm going to stand up for myself and learn how to do that. So it's as much as it is physical, it's psychological as well. And a lot of times when it comes to vets, we have a lot of vets that train with us because when they come back with PTSD, um, you know, sitting and talking in a room might not be the best outlet for them. You know, they want, they've been part of a group, the camaraderie of being in, in, in the military and uh, doing the training that we do in, in, in a, it's a big family when, when we train. So it's a way for them to get, you know, get rid of some of the aggression, the frustration they might feel and be part of a, a group again, so. That's so great. And you also work with a lot of celebrities, right? I work with some, yes. You want to expand on that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, work with some of them just because they want to learn how to defend themselves. Um, Hilary Swank, uh, after she did Million Dollar Babies, I can't take credit for her great boxing skills. Uh, she did Kramaga just again for, for the workout and mm -hmm. to learn how to defend herself. And uh, uh, Sasha Barry Cohen, um, Brandon Fraser for The Mummy. Uh, I was part of helping out, uh, a friend of mine was training Leonardo DiCaprio for Blood Diamonds and oh. I was part of helping set up for some of the scenes for that. And um, Rachel McAdams, I can't remember what movie it was for. Um, yeah, yes, a few. They all have great bodies. Um, what type of body does Krav Maga give you? Uh, you? You get very cut up because, you know, it's, it's very explosive. You know, most situations in the street are very short, so it's very, very short bursts of energy. So you definitely get toned, and because you continue to do in the same moves and learning how to uh, be explosive in your movements, um, you, you get very lean. Um, so if you're looking to be very bulk and b big, that's not Krav Maga, but being effective in your movements and, and knowing how to utilize your body, um, agility training, athleticism, that's all part of Krav Maga. So when I took your class, I could tell that you were very passionate about what you do. Why do you love teaching? Um, it's, it's funny because I, I love fighting myself, but again, you know, when it comes to people, most of the time people don't want to be fighters. But you know, when you see bullying, for example, seeing a kid going from being insecure, just the way they carry themselves, or a woman, as you mentioned, who's been sexually attacked, um, to, to be able to stand up for themselves, it's just the way they carry themselves. It's to change someone's life, to me, is that I, I wanna do this. I wanna do this for the rest of my life. I don't wanna do anything else. And, or if it's someone who's really overweight, you know, to see someone drop 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds, and get into shape. Same thing when it comes to confidence, but just the energy levels and the quality of life. To, to be able to do that for someone else, it, to me, is it's amazing. And what other classes do you teach at um, your gym? Uh, we have CrossFit, which is uh, the most rigorous type of a workout that you can do. Uh, you're not learning self-defense per se, but you will get into tremendous shape. Uh, Krav Maga, kickboxing, boxing, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, mixed martial arts. We have kids' classes. We have kids starting as young as, as three years old. We call them tiny tigers. Um, so we, we have yoga as well. Um, it's, it's, it's a family-oriented 
home. It's a, it's a home away from home uh, for the whole family to go in there. And a lot of times you have the parents taking the class while the kids are in the room next door doing their class. So we offer something for everyone. Yeah, a little bit of everything. I'm definitely going to come to your gym because I want to be million dollar million dollar baby <laughs> status. So thank you so much um, for joining us and it was, it was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. Great. And after the break, we have a special guest from one of Hawthorne's most popular late night eateries. Stay tuned. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Psst, they're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back. Our next guest is the co-owner of the infamous LEX Diner, known for its international menu, late night hours, and music scene. Let's welcome to the show Rudy Escamilla, who will be preparing a mouth-watering Cuban meal. Rudy, thank you for joining us. You're more than welcome, my dear. Thank you for inviting us. So tell me, what are you going to be cooking? We're going to be cooking today a uh, chicken fricassee. It's a Cuban dish, Ooh. very healthy dish. I've never had that. Oh, that's fantastic. It's it really good, very tasty. Is it something you prepare at your, menu or at your restaurant? It's something that we have on, on the available on the menu for the restaurant, yes. Cool, let's get started. Okay, fantastic. So the first thing that we're going to be doing here is uh, marinating the chicken which I have done already, but we go through the, through the instructions of how you do it. Okay, how long has so it been marinating for? It's been marinated for four hours. It's convenient for you to marinate more than 20. Ah, so, so you can, overnight. You can mar overnight, exactly. So what you do, you, you cut the chicken in pieces, mouse size. And it's all chicken breast? It's all chicken breast. That's, that's what healthy. I use because we want it to be healthy. Exactly. Some people do use uh, dark meat, but we like it very with chicken All breast. skinless too. All skinless too, skinless, boneless. That's the way I like it too. So we gonna uh, be uh, cutting the uh, bell peppers and the onions. So mm -hmm. you do a Giuliani style, I don't know if you know about the, uh, 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 the cutting, but I'll, I'll show you. So um, we clean the uh, bell pepper. I do one half, you do the other one if okay. you like. And then you just do a uh, Juliana style, which is a fajita style. Some other people t uh, I call it that way. So they're about, what, a half an inch thick, or? You're, you're talking about um, um, in between one quarter, one half, one half of an inch mm -hmm. cut. So that will be on the bell peppers. Okay. Okay. And I'll switch spots with you. Sure, we switch there. spots. And uh, um, you can do the other half, and then we'll do the onion, too. So we clean it. Okay? You cutting it okay, but th so what you do, you ah. you you clean the inside first, right? Pull there. that out. Yeah, there you are. Okay, I missed that step in it. Okay. Okay, we forgive you. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> Alrighty. Now so, what? So 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 after you you got um, your cuts, then we're gonna do the onion, which is same thing. Doing same thing. You peel the the two ends. Any tricks for not getting teary eyes? Yeah, any, yeah, so you close them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the only trick that I know. So anyway, um, Here, I'll grab all this once you right get here. used to, once you get used to, you don't cry. I'm still crying. You're still crying. Yeah, I'm still crying. So you do the same thing, you just cut, you know, one quarter, one half of an inch. And so that's how you come out with the cut. And this is the no, result, no, this is the result of it right here it's okay beautiful. yeah so we do the bell peppers we do the onions that's your preparation okay. and then you do the cut of the chicken which I as, as I said before 
is a mouse-sized car. This is how you ended up with your chicken. Already. So you do this before, this before, chicken before, and then voila, you have this. Right, then you put a little garlic on it. You put one, one teaspoon of garlic. And that's, and that's kind of pretty small. Yeah, well, that's, you know, garlic is very powerful, so you don't want to <laughs> You don't too want much. too bad of breath. So right. It's great for a dinner party or something, because you could do so much prep work before, and then got it already marinating and ready to cook. Yeah, you, this, is, this is how you're going to end it up with the marination. So you got your, your garlic, your onions, your bell peppers, and the secret ingredient will be the orange juice. Mm. So what kind of oranges do you use? This is um, sour oranges, not the real oranges like for an orange juice where you, you, you is, want it sweet. What is sour orange juice? I don't it's, think I've ever cooked with that. Well, it's, uh, it's a special orange that is not sweet. Huh. So you get the juice and that's where you're going to marinate it, and it kind of cooks it. You can get it anywhere, any grocery store? Uh, Latino stores. Latino stores, okay. I don't tell you the brand because, you know, it won't be good. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's where you get it, on a Latino store. So you ended up with this. And okay. The next step that we're going to do, we're going to turn, turn, turn on the stove, yes. Okay. How uh, high? What kind mid, of medium? Mid-term, yeah, mid-term. Okay. And then we're going to put some of the olive oil. Here we go. How much olive oil do you use about? And you use about uh, two tablespoons. And what you're going to be doing after the oil gets all um, heat up, mm -hmm. then we're going to be shearing the chicken. Mm -hmm. We're going to be uh, sealing a little bit. And that way, when we're cooking the chicken, it doesn't let go all its juices. So you want to maintain the juice inside the chicken. And, and all uh, the juices that's soaking up in this concoction over the, here. The, you're going to be maintaining the juice of the chicken only. Then after that, you put the rest of the stuff on the pot that we're going to be doing. Right. So that's going to take us. Wait a little bit for that to... Yeah. What about all these ingredients over here? Are we going to be adding these to it? or All these ingredients over here, which is capers mm -hmm. from Spain, and then the tomato sauce and the potatoes, and the rest of the marination, we're going to be cooking, we're throwing it all into the, the big pot that we're going to be cooking it after we seal, we, we seal it. And ev all these other ingredients you could get at any grocery store or Latino market? No, all these uh, um, you know, the rest of the ingredients you can get it in any store. Maybe the capers a little difficult to find anywhere, but the Latin markets for sure you find them. I there. love capers. Ah, I capers anything. are fantastic, yeah. Not a lot of people like them, but I will love them. I like them. Yeah, they're very good and very healthy for you too. So the whole thing is very healthy. Can we go ahead and add some chicken we, now? Yeah, we're going to uh, go ahead and add some chicken on it. So you try to take everything out of it. And you add the veggies too, the green you peppers and the onions? The veggies are going to be after we have all the chickens here. Mm -hmm. I'm turn it down a little so it's not splashing everywhere. So if you weren't to marinate it, the chicken wouldn't have all the flavor. Like when it, the marinating is when it really soaks up. Right, the marination is gonna give them the flavor. Mm -hmm. So you so can't cheat the marination if you're you running low on time. You know, you go from one side to another. You make sure that well, everything is gonna be sheer. About does this chicken take to cook? Um, the, it's gonna take about 30 minutes the whole deal. Okay. Um, but what we're going to be doing right now, we're just going to be searing it, and then after that, we throw Let's everything onto the, the pot. Okay. So that's the way okay, it's so going to be will looking. Be this is, the way it's going to be looking is a, a white all around. Do you add any sure. salt and pepper or anything to not any yet, seasoning? Not okay. yet, not yet. We're going to throw that into the pot, onto okay. the main pot. Easy enough. So, yeah. So that's, that's what we do here. And then we're going to use our, our next spot, which is right here. What do you need? Oh. One more spot here. You want me to, right here you want to? Uh, I think we're going to move this one here. And we're going to put this one over here. And what are we going to be cooking in this? We're going to be cooking the, the chicken fricassee okay. there. Okay. I'll put it on medium or high? Uh, medium is fine. Medium is fine. I don't know how much time do we have left, but you we gotta start cooking. Yeah, we gotta start cooking. Yeah. Okay, so here so let's we go. Let's start making the sauce. How about that? Okay, so this is what we're gonna be doing now. So after you get your chicken all really white like this, mm -hmm. you're gonna throw it into the next pot. Okay. And then, and then you're gonna be throwing the rest of the stuff. 
which yes. is your bell peppers and your onions on it with the juice. So the olive it. oil is just to cook the chicken, and then this is when we're, we're gonna mix all the other ingredients and right, make right. the sauce. Right, right, right. Then we're gonna put our tomato sauce on it right now. Some water. All right, I'll grab some tomato sauce. So what's the history behind this recipe? Is it a family tradition? Well, it, um, uh, fricassee, uh, chicken fricassee was made in France, and then it was adopted by the, by the Cuban people, from the people coming from Spain. Hmm. So, but once you taste it, you're gonna love it. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Smells good really so far. Gonna. Can I add the tomato sauce now? Yeah, you can add tomato. Should I yeah, dump it in or all you, of it? Yeah, for that amount, we're gonna throw okay. like a couple oh. of those. But I love my tomatoes. I was about to just dump it all in. Here we go. That's it. Then we're gonna add the same amount of um, same amount of of water on it. And is this a low sodium salt or anything specific to look for, or just regular tomato paste or tomato? Regular salt? regular tomato salt, sauce. Uh, no salt, no pepper. We're gonna add the salt and pepper ourselves. How much water do you need? Which is we're gonna put the same amount of water. Let me give you one of the containers I'm that we have. I'm just gonna add here. a little water to it. Ah, uh, go ahead, yeah. Kind of eyeball A little it. more, a little more, yeah. All right. So this, a little more. So we did. It's gonna be so the to same thing. So make it more thing. of a soup. It's gonna be the same, the same amount of tomato and the same amount of water. It's gonna be some, some, some type of a, like a, a stew. So we're gonna do uh, one teaspoon of okay. salt for that amount and one half of the pepper. So when do you prepare this recipe? What's the appropriate occasion? Any night? Is it special? Well, it's a, it's a daily it's a daily dish, you know, it's not for special. You can eat it every day. We eat it every day. So here we go. And what are these capers, the capers soaked in? Just what they came with naturally? Uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, their own their own water, on their own juice. So we're gonna let it cook for about 20 minutes, and then at That's the very good. end, we're gonna add the uh, wine chardonnay. The best part. The best part <laughs> of it. Okay. What's really gonna give them a taste. So here we go, we're gonna Is add. this drinking wine or special cooking wine? This is uh, um, uh, the dry chardonnay drinking wine. Um, we should be drinking cooking. a glass of it right now while yeah, we're cooking. Yeah, you're totally right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after. <laughs> There you are. So I'll that's our. A little bit. Right. So this warm, we're gonna have our. our Looks delicious. So is this a recipe that you could kind of multitask and be cleaning the house while you're cooking, or you really gotta watch it? No, you you can be cleaning the uh, the house, and you don't have to watch it. You just have to know that if it's. 10, 15 minutes, you come back mm -hmm. to it. You make sure Just that nice. it's all, already cooked. So now we're gonna be doing the fried plantains and okay. we're gonna take advantage of the uh, olive oil that we have over there. So as you see the fried plantains, um, they're all dark. And a lot of people think that, oh, those are no good. Yeah, look like they've but been in an old lunch box right, or something. Right, right, right. But that's exactly how you want it. You want it as dark as possible. And the reason why is because they get sweeter. So, so that's why you want it that and way. And that's also at a Latino store because I can't say that I've seen plant. I see bananas all the time, right? But plantains, not so much. Well, you know, um, a lot of the stores are, especially uh, stores that they dedicate to the restaurants, they carry them. But Latino stores, for sure. And they're different from a banana how? Yeah, they, they're told the taste is different, and then you can cook with these ones, not with the other ones. Mm, okay, so we're gonna slide them, okay? You can slide them, and and a lot of the people just love to have these fried plantains because them themselves is a is a very yeah plantain chips. I always munch on those. Kind of a healthy snack. It's a uh, um, very healthy and also very tasty. You can also use it as a as a dessert. Yeah, so you can make a few extra and then right. have some left over. And not only that. Uh, you don't even have to wait. You can eat it like this too. And so these Very are going to go on the top, correct? Those are going to go on the top as okay. the garnish. Perfect. Well, I'm going to start decorate. plating. Ah, beautiful. Plating let's the dish, let's just and do then that. While the plantains are cooking, then we could add it to the top and 
try this thing out because I am getting hungry. Looking oh, beautiful. Me. Let's do it. All right. So show me, show me how this okay, goes. Okay. So as you see, the, the chicken fricassee is starting to cook already. But we're going we gonna to serve the rice. Okay. Fair we're going to serve the rice. And let me use one of them. Oh, you want to use? I use one of these ah. little things. To uh, give it, it a, give it a shape, and you can also use brown rice, right? If you're trying of to get Of course, definitely, sure, sure, or? sure, sure, sure. You can go and be. Oh, they're going a little crazy. Gotta be careful. You are don't want to splatter. Are they exploding on? Well, let, let me uh, turn it around. Here we go. So you got the rice, and then should I serve up the beans? Is that going on the side? Right on the side, okay. that's right. I'm going to squeeze behind you. Excuse okay, me. Okay, sure. Okay, so we got our beans. More fiber in there, too. One, one side, one side of beans. And black beans are so healthy, too. I love them. Right. Okay. And then... You oh, I see. You make a little rice house. Right, exactly. A little okay. A little mountain, a little volcano. All right, and then I need a mist in this. Right, you then you put that on the side. Okay. Let me, I'm, I'm so I put it on top of the rice or on the side? No, you put it right on the side. So what you put on top of the rice is the black beans. Cuban people love to mix the white rice and the All black right. beans. And do I? And then I and normally I put the plantains on top, but I'm gonna take a bite because I. Can't wait for them now. It just looks so good. Ah, beautiful. There you are. Superb. Ah. I love it. I've never really had Cuban food. It's great. Oh, really? Ah, great. Thank you so much for oh, cooking this for welcome, me and showing us this recipe. And thanks for watching Forks and Fitness. We hope you learned a few new healthy tips. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please call 310-349-1630. We'll see you next time.